Hi, I'm Ned Reynolds. Thank you very much for joining us. This is the podcast for the Ozarks Basketball Preview 32nd Annual. And we are at the courts on Kearney Street in Springfield where the photo session is taking place and where our presentation for the 2017-2018 Coach of the Year presentation will be made. And that Coach of the Year is the gentleman to my left. His name is Steve Frank, a highly successful girls basketball coach and three-time state champion Stratford and the Lady Indians. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is very interesting because we're possibly embarking on history. 80, 82, 82 straight wins. That is 20 shy of the Marshfield record, which is uh, probably among the most iconic, not only in Missouri, but in the state, 102 straight. Does that, does that even weigh on your mindset? Do the girls even talk about it at all? Well, I'm sure that they talk about it uh, a little bit, but once we are at school and at practice and together as a team, um, it's not something that we discuss or talk about. And, you know, we try to stay as even keel as we can. And I think the first couple of years we tried to really stay under the radar. And, and now it's kind of hard to stay under the radar. And those things are out there um, after all of our games. But um, it's it's – it's special, and and I try to to emphasize to the kids that they they don't need to take this for granted, and it's a very special thing. Even though we try not to talk about it a lot, but uh, you know, it's it, to be following a team as good as Marshfield. I mean, they they went through an era where they were just so good, and you know, to to be talked about in the same sentence as them is, is kind of an honor in itself. Let's go back into history, just a bit in Steve Frank's history. Do you remember where you were when the 102 straight victories was taking place? I believe I was coaching at Conway at that time. <laughs> you did not encounter them, though, did you? No, no, we did not. So, um, I, I actually, um, would go once or twice a year, I would call and 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 go and watch them practice. Uh, you know, you you wanted to uh, kind of build your team around and try to f- figure out some things that you could do. And I would, during those during that big run, I would go um, and watch a practice or two and just try to pick up anything I could pick up. And um, you know, now it's the the role's almost reversed, and it's kind of ironic how that happened. Interestingly enough, there is there's a correlation in many respects because they had the Howard sisters, although they weren't twins. But your team has your daughters twins, and they are both catalysts to this ball club. What impact do the two girls, your two girls, have on the team? Well, I think growing up, um, this is my 28th year, I believe, in coaching and. From the time they were able to walk, they've they've been on the bench and they've been in the locker rooms and on the bus. And I think just the mindset of of knowing what it takes. A lot of times that's that's so key. And um, you know they they're able to kind of convey that into the rest of our team. And they read off each other. Being twins, a lot of times you see they they kind of know where each other's at on the floor. And um, you know our group is is very deep and I always tell our kids when we get kind of close to the district run it's not number one or number two because those kids are going to be on everybody's board it's number three four five and six those are the ones that have to step up in the big and that's that's what's been so fortunate for us is our depth and our kids have really stepped up and uh, you know taking the pressure off when the pressure needs to be taken off and I think our kids know when it's time that they got to step up too and you know in a big game and and so they see that and they understand that. And I think just the balance of all that is, is kind of contributes to our success. Interested to hear you say that, despite the fact that there are two stars, two All-Staters on the team, the relationship, I'm assuming, between the other team members and them, the two girls, is pretty good? Oh, yes. Yes, our team is very tight. And I mean, our chemistry and kind of what we're all about is, you know, the culture. And that's what we've tried to build. And, and I've you know, girls basketball, I've always said that, you know, that's the key is if you can keep that unity going, um, you know, that, that, that way is big in girls basketball. And I think that's really kind of our focus every year is, you know, we make sure that we're going to share the ball and it doesn't matter if you play two minutes or you play 32 minutes, you know, you're a valuable asset to this team. And one night, depending on who we're playing, um, you know, if we're playing a bigger team, they're some of our other players may play more than another player and then on a different night and our kids understand that and they accept their roles and you know whatever their role is every night we take the floor our kids accept that and I think that's 
that's a tribute to our success. Steve, these haven't all been routes. You've had some great games with Skyline and people like that. Mm -hmm. The girls' reaction to really tight moments, how has that been in your opinion? Well, I, last year in the Final Four, we played Whitfield. And, uh, you know, that's that's been a big game for us. We played them the last two years in the Final Four and played them for the state championship, I believe, two years ago. And, and uh, you know, at halftime, it was, a, it was a tight game. And I think it was the end of the third quarter before we finally started to pull away from them. But, uh, you know, games like that really test you and you kind of see – Kind of see where you're at, and, and this year our schedule, we have really kind of uh, upped our schedule, and I, I believe that you know we're going to have a lot more of those games this year, and, and we're going to get battle tested early and kind of see how we react when our back's against the wall. In in coaching the girls at at every level, what strategy have you used? What have you used as your mindset, having coached all these years? What uh, implementation have you brought into it? Well, we've tried to spread the game out and try to play really fast. Um, we've tried to play every possession like it's the last possession. Um, you know, rebounding is the big key. You can't get out and do that until you rebound. And then defensively, we try to really get out and guard hard defensively. And I think that's the, the unstatted thing that our teams have done really well is, is we get out and we guard really hard. And, and that, in turn, leads to the offensive side of it. And, uh, you know, I feel like that's probably the biggest key to this group of kids. Do you model your coaching after anybody in particular? I don't believe so. I think when you're younger, you kind of look at that. But I've kind of learned that you basically you have to coach to the kids that you have. And whatever group of kids you have, you have to play to their strengths. And I think when I was younger in my first half of my coaching, uh, I tried to coach a certain way. And I've kind of learned over the years that, you know, you've got to model your coaching style to the type of kids you have. And I think that's that's been an attribute to our success. Well, even though you've been to the state championships with the girls at Stratford, state championships, nothing new to you, Steve. You played in high school at Clopton. You were up at the state championships on a number of occasions. That never gets old, does it? No, no. <laughs> when did you learn from playing in, at Clopton High? Well, my father was a coach for 33 years. And... You know, Clopton went through on the boys' side, uh, us in Scott County, I think in the 80s, we, we met, I think, in the final four, four or five times in about a 10 or 12-year stretch. And, you know, I think the, uh, the lessons I took away from it is we never did win the big game. We, we got beat in the state championship a couple times. And, and I think that really weighed on me as I became a coach is – all the little things that have to be done and to, to prep. And I kind of look back on those teams that I played on and, and try to analyze what we could have done to, to change that outcome. And so I think I've tried to implement that in our coaching as well and, and try to take away from those, those hard lessons and, and turn them into positives. Did uh, Big Al Waller have an impact on you? Yes, he did. He, uh, he was a terrific coach at College of the Ozarks. And, um, you know, Al was one of those guys that he kind of recruited – the uh, style of kids that, that met his mm -hmm. his demeanor and his needs and and uh, you know I can't say enough about Coach Waller. He was he really uh, at a time in my life when you're kind of looking for guidance and trying to figure out what you're going to do the rest of your life and that he was a huge impact on that. Give the uh, folks on the podcast a little bit of a background to check on you and your coaching. After all, this is 28 years for you. What's been the uh, trail? Well, I think, uh, you know, in all the years of coaching, I look back and I've had a lot of good teams and I've had great kids. And, you know, it's just the relationships that you build along the way and all the people um, that you build relationships and kind of develop all the things in the Springfield area. I remember when I first came back to the Springfield area, I went back up north and coached for a while when I was coaching boys. And I came back and when I was up around home, everybody knew who I was and and you had those connections. And when I came back here, it took a while to kind of build those relations and, and connections. And then after a few years, you've really, you, you get that here in the Southwest area now. And I feel like, you know, anything that I need, I can pick the phone up and call somebody because I have a connection. And, and you know, I think over the years, that's, that's really the thing you value the most is, is the relations that you build with other coaches and other players and, and just the people in general that, that are just diehard sports fans that come to all your games and you build relationships with them as well. You can uh, say the same thing about the kids who play the game too because that camaraderie means a lot. Now, 
not being female, nor you being female, can uh, really explore the mindset of girls, but do you assume that they develop that same attitude as guys do, the, the camaraderie, the locker room frivolity that goes on sometimes? Yes, I mean, and I emphasize that a lot too. I, I talk about the days when I played, and of course, after I was finished playing, I think the biggest question for several years was, do you miss it? And I look back and I didn't miss all the sprints and all the running and everything. But the one thing that you miss once you are done is you really miss that time that you are together and in the locker room and eating dinner together and, and all the things you do as a team. And so I really try to iterate that on my team as well. And I, when we're in the locker room, I say, you guys have to appreciate this because these are moments in your life that you don't realize until you're done how special they are. And, and so I try, to, I try to really emphasize that to the kids and, and not – let them take those moments for granted. Well, let's just talk about Steve Frank in the future, because both your girls graduated Stratford. They'll both probably, not probably, they will be playing college basketball, one in the area, the other very slightly out of the area. Well, that presents a problem for <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Frank upon seeing girls basketball. Has that dawned on you at all? Well, we've looked at schedules and we've <laughs> tried to uh, evaluate how we are going to attempt to go watch both of them play and continue to coach and that's probably the million dollar question right now at Stratford is is what I'm going to do um, when that takes place so um, as of this point we've not I've not made a decision on how we're going to approach that but uh, that is going to pose a big big question. I'm interested in the girls mindset now these are twins and they're very close to each other but one chooses Mizzou and the other chooses College of the Ozarks. Was there ever a disparity between the two of them in terms of where they might end up? I don't think so. I think even though they're twins, they, they both have t two totally different mindsets. Um, the things they do and, and even the way that they play on the court is, is kind of two, total different, uh, two total different personalities. And I feel like they both made decisions, smart decisions, based on – their personalities and their needs, and I think Bo, I think Kaylee is going to have a awesome career at College of the Ozarks, and I think that that atmosphere really fits her needs and, and is going to be great for her career. And then on the flip side of that, I think uh, Haley going to Mizzou, um, you know, I think the same thing. I, I I just feel like that that program is on the up and up right now, and they're uh, in a situation where things are really going to get good and. Uh, you know, they've been really good with Sophie Cunningham in, in the last few years, but uh, they've made some, some big strides in their recruiting. And uh, I think Haley, uh, Elijah, or Asia Blackwell from Whitfield, who we play, just committed here this past yeah, week to Mizzou. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a great point guard who is a freshman this year who is committed uh, out of Tennessee. And the pieces are really coming together, and it's going to be interesting to kind of see how all that plays out. We know Coach Pinchon pretty well from her days at Illinois State, and she is a fine coach. Yes. yes. So your young lady will be very well guided up in Columbia. Yes, she will. Well, you are, as we mentioned earlier, our choice for Magazine Coach of the Year, and it is a great personal pleasure from publisher Jeff Sadler and yours truly to present you with the Coach of the Year Award. I know you have won many of them in the past, but for us, this is very special, Stephen. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And thank you all for the podcast. Please read the magazine. <laughs> it's free. <laughs>